Hi, Algebra. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at some patterns with multiplication, maybe thinking about some of these patterns in different ways than we usually have. So here we go. The first thing we're going to do is look at row two right here. And the way that this table is set up is that the row number and the column number get multiplied together to put the number in the bubble. So we're going to start in the blue section here. So two times one is going to be two right there. And then going over two times two would be four, two times three would be six. So fill in the rest of this row. So there's the rest of the blue section in this row. And the idea here is that even if you don't know, for example, say two times seven, I know you do, but if you didn't know that it was 14, you could use your pattern that you notice that we're going by twos to fill in that spot. Next, let's go over here to the yellow. Now we're going to be taking two times negative numbers. So two times negative one is going to be negative two. And notice that it follows that pattern that we're going by twos, except now we are into the negatives. So going this way, two times negative two is going to be negative four, and we fill in the rest of them. What we want to start seeing here is that the patterns, for example, that a positive number times a negative number gets us a negative number and a positive number times a positive number gets us a positive number. Here's row three all filled in. And again, we're noticing a positive number times a negative number gets us a negative number. Now we're going to look at column negative two and start filling this in. So starting at the top, we have negative two times positive nine. That's going to be a negative 18. I see next that eight times negative two is negative 16. Then I have seven times negative two. That's gonna be negative 14. Then there's negative 12. Then we have negative 10, that's negative five, or excuse me, five times negative two. Then we have negative eight, negative six, negative four, we've already filled in. Then we'll have negative two and then zero. As we keep going down column negative two, now we are into the part where we're going to be taking negative numbers times negative numbers. So negative two times negative two, that's going to be a positive four. And if you notice, following our pattern, that we've been going up by twos, we are now into the positives. So this is part of the reason that a negative number times a negative number gets you a positive number. We could keep filling in that whole table, but we're not going to. But I do want you to write down this somewhere reminding you that a positive times a positive is a positive. A negative times a negative is a positive. And a positive number times a negative number is going to be a negative number. Here I want us to just look at numbers seven and eight. So the first one is asking where would 24 be in the multiplication table? So remember in the table, we're multiplying our column number by our row number. So three times eight is 24. Another option would maybe be two times 12, um, but we also want to think of our negatives. So something like negative three times negative eight would also be positive 24, or negative six times negative four would also be positive 24, or we could have negative two times negative 12 would be positive 24. In number eight, where would negative 12 be in the multiplication table? Six times negative two would be negative 12, a positive times a negative. Um, we could also flip that and do negative six times positive two. That would be negative 12. Um, we do another one, three times negative four or negative three times positive four, or we could do one times negative 12. That would also be in the table. Number 13 is a good one for looking at some vocabulary. We're talking about factors and product. Product is the answer we get when we multiply, and factors are the numbers that we multiply together. So make note of that if you need. A is asking to give an example of two factors whose product is 30. So an example here could be 3 times 10 would equal 30, or 30 times 1 would equal 30. In B, we're going to give an example of three factors whose product is 30. So maybe I'm going to have five times three, which is 15. And then if I multiply that by two, I would have 30. In lesson three, we're going to start looking at area really closely. And 
The first thing to remember is that area is the amount of space that this shape is taking up flat space. So to find out how many squares there would be, would be finding the area. So I'm going to take four times six, my length times my width to find my area. So four times six would be 24. Then remember the perimeter is the distance all the way around. So this side would also be four, this side's also six. And if I add all of those up, my perimeter there would be 20. In number two, my area, I would do three times eight, that would be 24. My perimeter distance all the way around is going to be 22. So this one's a little bit interesting in that they both have the same area, but they do have different perimeters. All right, check your work on three through six to make sure that you got all those areas and perimeters correct. If you have questions, make sure you're asking. Now we're gonna start with number 14. Now we have a variable here instead of the length of that side, but the process is still gonna be the same. I'm gonna take five times M to get the area, or in math, we usually just write it as five M. When those things are right beside each other, it means they're being multiplied. For my perimeter, I'm going to write it as 5 plus m plus 5 plus m, but I am going to simplify it. I have two 5s, that ends up being 10, and I have two m's, so that ends up being 2m, and I would just leave it like that. In number 15, my area is going to be a times b, that's my length times my width, and so I'll just leave it as ab. My perimeter would be a plus b plus another a plus another b. And then simplifying that, I have two a's. So that would be written as 2a. And I have two b's. So that would be written as plus 2b. And there's the perimeter. In this one for my area, I would take 3x times 5y. And for now, let's just leave it like that. My perimeter, I would take 3x plus 5y plus 3x plus 5y. Now I can combine some of these. I have 3x and I have three more x. So in total, that is six x's. And I have 5y plus 5y. And in total, that is 10 y's. And so there's my perimeter simplified. We're going to move ahead to 21 here. And now we're gonna see our area models, we call this being split up a little bit. So for example, the length of this whole side is 16, but we're splitting it up into a part with 10 and a part with six. That's because multiplying those pieces by five is gonna be a lot easier. So five times 16, five times 16, can be rewritten as five times 10, that's gonna be this part, which we know is 50. Plus, we're going to add on this part, 5 times 6, which we know is 30. And so 5 times 16 is just this part, which is 50, plus this part, which is 30. And so we just add those together, and we get our total area, or our answer, of 80. So let's go to 22. We're going to be doing 6 times 13. So 6 times this distance right here is a total of 13. So I break this up, six times 10 is a lot easier, that's 60, and then six times three is 18. So then I would just add those together to get my total. So over here I'd have 60 plus 18, that's gonna be 78. So six times 13 is 78. Here's one where we're splitting up both numbers. So this side is a total of 15, we broke it into 10 and five. This side is a total of 26, we broke it into 20 and six. And so 10 times 20 is 200, 10 times six is 60, 20 times five is going to be 100, and five times six is 30. And so now we're just going to add all of those pieces together. So 10 times 20 was 200, 10 times 60 was 60, five times 20 is 100, and five times six is 30. And adding these together, I have 200 and 100, so that's 300, and then 60 plus 30 would be 90. And when you're adding all of these pieces together, um, you could definitely write them vertically, line up your place values, and see it that way. 
Carla in number 23 is using this model to find 14 times 15. So 10 times 4, or 10 plus 4, this distance right here is 14. This distance over here is 15. And the question is asking, what should she do next to find the value of 14 plus 15? Well, she's already found all of the areas in here. So the last thing she needs to do is add them up. So 100 plus 40 plus 50 plus 20. And this addition doesn't end up being too bad. 4 plus 5 plus 2 is 11. And my final answer is 210.